Hey everyone, it's Nightlight9, and in this video, I'm gonna go over the new banner featuring Barret and Red 13. This one is very bittersweet for me because Barret is one of my favorite characters in Final Fantasy VII, and he would normally be somebody that I would try to work into as many team comps as possible. In fact, back when the game first came out, he was one of the first three characters that I maxed level on because I wanted to use him as much as I could. However, he has been featured on less banners than any other character in the game. Uh, I guess minus Kate Sith at this point. And so therefore, you know, he just became less and less viable. Let's go over what he's got here and, uh, and take a look and see what we got. So I'm going to start with what I normally start with, which is previewing uh, how it looks. And I'll say I think this is pretty good. It's pretty good. Uh, it's it's like trying to be kind of suave, but also still hard because it's Barrett, and that's just kind of his personality. I uh, I think it's good. I mean, it's not my favorite looking costume, generally speaking, but I do think that they've gone with a style that I could see Barrett going with. It's not out of character for him, and so I uh, it gets my approval on that. Now, as far as the abilities. The outfit is called Electro Armor, and it has a standard boost 10 HP, and then it also has a new R ability called Indomitable Soul. What this gives is physical and magical defense plus 20%, and physical and magical attack plus 10%. I would say this is quite good. Quite good. Um, you know, I think most of the things that give any sort of R ability usually you're gonna see maybe 15% on one of these. Obviously, if there was an Arcanum ability, it might be more, but when it's usually going to something like a potency type of thing, uh, usually you're not seeing it you know, as high as what an Arcanum would be. So the fact that it gives two at plus 10, I think it makes the outfit very versatile, and I think it's decently good. And then here, this physical and magical defense is actually what I like the most about it. Uh, plus 20% is a lot. And I think it works well for Barrett because of the role that I think he kind of plays. Uh, I would have normally pictured Barrett as a damage dealer type unit, but he's not really. I think he's more suited as kind of like the Tifa utility role, the original Tifa anyway. Um, so because most of his stuff, like he can do the same things that Tifa can do with some of his weapons as far as debuffing enemies. And as we get into the weapon here, we'll see that that's further what they're going for with him at the moment. So we've got Electro Cannon here, and it's electric uh, or lightning damage, but as most lightning damage abilities or weapons in the game, it is an all enemy target. Um, you know, I'm not crazy about this part. I'll be honest, the other day I was just looking at all the different lightning weapons, and I'm pretty sure Correct me if I'm wrong, I think only Cloud and Lucia actually have viable single target lightning damage weapons. Every other one that I could think of in the game or that I own is all enemies, which means that there's not very many viable lightning builds for a boss other than Cloud or Lucia at the moment. And so, you know, it's, it's whatever. I think if this was more of like a single target lightning whatever, then it would you know, lend itself towards damage dealer. It's not. This is like Kuja Spirit Blade, basically. Uh, you've got here, you know, starting out of the box, mid, mid potency physical attack decrease. Um, I'm assuming that most of the time your HP is going to be 50% or more. So it's also a mid potency magic attack decrease. And then starting at OB6, it stacks on the physical attack to high. It doesn't stack the magical attack to high, which I don't know. It's a little bit awkward but whatever. Other than that, I think it's really good as a sub weapon. Uh, this boost magical ability potency going up to 52 seems good to me. As far as materia slots go, circle sigil boost is fine. I think that's good. But ultimately this is a support weapon. You know, it's like basically bringing him in to try to, you know, debuff the enemy so you can survive better. And that's what it's doing. So for me, this is good news and bad news. The good news is it depends what your account needs. If you're a veteran player, I think you've probably already got pretty reliable ways to do this. 
um, and therefore I think this is most likely a skip. If you're new and you don't have either of these or you don't have something that can do it really simply uh, or like, you know, efficiently, I guess I would say, then this could be really good. The problem, especially for veteran players, and I'm going to say a veteran player, if you even started it by January in this game, I would say this is most likely a skip. And the reason is I just don't see very many people using Barrett. I can't remember the last time I was in a co-op and somebody used him, and I don't see people using him because he hasn't been featured. He's been the most neglected character in the roster, and so why would you build up a character that's never getting any new meta weapons? You don't. And I'm not saying that people don't have him at level 70, but how many of their we his weapons have ever been wishlisted? Most likely not very many. And I can tell you, uh, since trying to build up Kate Sith, for example, obviously the easiest way to stick in a, a character that you don't have high OB weapons for is in this scenario, where you're using them for debuffing or buffing for the most part. Because damage dealers, they really rely on the higher OB weapons to actually increase the C ability, to increase these R abilities, you know, and really pump up their damage. However, uh, even with Kate Sith, you know, like, it's hard to put him in, uh, in in certain scenarios because I just don't have any big weapons to main for him yet. And that makes things hard. If you're free to play or a light spender and you don't have Barrett built up by this point and we're literally going into seven months into the game here, does it really make sense to turn around and start building him now because of one weapon and one outfit? I would say mo most likely no. No, it's not. Uh, if you're new, maybe, maybe, but their track record still hasn't been good for Barrett. And so until I see him featured on like two more banners, I don't know if, the, if this is going to change anything. Are they going to feature him again? Like, let's say in the next month, if they don't, would you be kind of upset if you put your eggs in this basket? I think I personally would. All right. So the other weapon that we've got here is for red 13. He does not have an outfit on this banner, just the weapon. It's called Ivy Collar. And man, I will say <laughs> this weapon is really, really good for it for a lot of reasons. OK, so from just an R ability standpoint, uh, this boost attack number is really high. And I think, you know, the stronger we're getting now, even for free to play or light spender accounts, I mean, if you've been in here for a while, you're going to have physical attack or magical attack, whatever main attribute you're using for your damage dealer. You're going to be able to max those out, I would say, quite easily at this point. And so the next best way to start getting these damage dealing stats up is to start going for regular attack. And, and a weapon like this is pretty efficient as a sub weapon to do so. Uh, and then honestly, the boost ability potency, not bad, and especially on, you know, characters that you're trying to pump out a lot of damage with their uh, limit break or a summon, I mean, this could really uh, help. So I really like the R abilities on this weapon. This here is also freaking amazing. Uh, being able to get Materia with the plus 30% damage, I always like those on weapons. The fact that this one has fire and ice, it, uh, wow, really, really good. Now, the best part about the weapon is fire resist and ice resist decrease so it's got two breaches on it that even right just one copy of this weapon is mid to high that is insanely good and then if you get it to ob6 you're just looking at high high now what i like about this weapon and why i think it's so much better than barrett's yes debuffing is a big deal to stay alive but sometimes you're in those race scenarios or you're trying to get enough damage in because as we've seen, doing a lot of damage a lot of times uh, can really make up for not having as good of defense. And so this is good to me because when it's necessary, when you're against enemies that have the ice or the fire, especially if they're, you know, resistant to the opposite one, right? So you have like their like two enemies, one's strong against fire, weak against ice, and the other one's the opposite, or something like that. This really shines because of the versatility. And I think 
it, it actually can be the only weapon you really need to equip on red. Throw them, the rest of them can be sub weapons and whatever else. And this is going to make a much bigger difference, in my opinion. And there's no other way to do this this efficiently, right? Whereas with the weapon that we saw from Barrett, uh, I think Kate Sith has a weapon that can do that. Kuja Spirit Blade can do that. And so it's easier to find. And also there's a lot of single target versions that can do one of the, you know, physical attack decrease or magic attack decrease. There's getting to be more uh, fire breach and ice breach weapons, generally speaking, but combining these into one is the first weapon of its kind to do this. I think this makes it amazing. If I was gonna pull on this banner, I would be pulling for this Ivy Collar and I would only care to get one copy. I think that's all that's needed because two casts is gonna get you to high potency anyway. Uh, that's that's where I am. And like I said, I'm not saying that Barret's weapon isn't useful. It really depends on where your account is though. And I would, I would venture to guess that it's gonna be more useful for newer players than for veteran players that have probably already found solutions for debuffing. So, that's what I think of this banner generally. Um, it is possible, I guess. I said I wasn't going to pull. April 28th, uh, that gives me, you know, quite a bit of time to save up. And I, I may end up trying to pull just to see if I could get one copy of that Ivy Collar. I, I do think that it's that good just to have in your back pocket. And Red 13 is a generally useful utility character anyway. So that weapon really goes along with his kit as well. I, I think this is overall a pretty good banner. Uh, I just don't know. They've been pumping out a lot of stuff lately, you know? And I think, I know a lot of people are gonna be really disappointed that this finally comes out, especially if you're a Red or a Barrett fan. Uh, and I know there's a lot of Red people out there that, that have summoned on his stuff in the past that may also be broke now. But I just, I guess the, the silver lining for me is that at least these are the two least featured characters. And so missing out on them is probably not as big of a deal for your team strength or your account strength as missing out on somebody else. So that's kind of where I am on that. I'd like to know what you guys think. Subscribe for future content if you're not already. If you are, I appreciate each and every one of your support. And as always, thanks for watching.